Okay, so that is my lecture. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah, I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you learn to knit the easy way. Let's talk Christmas knitting, shall we? And yeah, I have dressed for the occasion. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Doctor Who fan. Yeah, I'm a Doctor Who fan. Yeah, I'm a Doctor Who fan. So I've got myself a Christmas t-shirt of the TARDIS covered in snow. But I also like knitting for Christmas. And of course, there are so many other winter festivals that occur in the next few months, along with the fact that in the Northern Hemisphere, I mean, especially in Canada and some of the Northern states in the US, not to mention the North areas in Europe, and in the UK, we feel the cold, even though it doesn't get as cold as other parts of the world. But we love to knit. And that's why knitting becomes so popular um, in the winter months. So if you want to knit either for winter or indeed for Christmas, let's talk about that today. So first things first, do you realise exactly how much you've got on your plate in the next few months? Because this is going to impact your knitting time as well and your capacity to knit too. I know when I've got a lot on my plate, I will not get my knitting out in the evening. I will say, no, I need a rest. I cannot do this. Um, because some knitting that we do actually needs real focus. So all very well saying, yeah, I'll pull it out, I'll knit. But what's the point if you're basically going to bring it out the next day and unravel all of you've knitted because you've made mistakes, because you can't focus as well. Are you a parent? Are you a grandparent? Do you help with school runs? Do you just find yourself getting kind of overwhelmed in the back to school time? So is your time needed elsewhere in the weeks before and after school starts? And just think that that is something that will impact your time as well. What else is going on? Do you suddenly need to go back to the office? Have you been working from home and perhaps knitting on Zoom meetings? <laughs> That's probably not unusual, but can you really take your knitting into work and sit in meetings at work and knit? I don't know, maybe you can, maybe it's something they won't let you do. The other thing is, perhaps it goes completely the other way and you actually feel that you've got more time at work. You're commuting perhaps, sitting on the train, or maybe you do have a lunch time, um, which you probably wouldn't have at home because the children are there or you just find yourself cleaning or doing other things during the day when you can actually focus on your knitting during your lunch break once you've eaten. And at work, you actually have some peace and quiet. You know your life best Figure it out and work out whether you've got more or less time in the next couple of months. And then, of course, in the run-up to Christmas, it's a funny old time. And yes, last year was just a bit odd. Um, not a lot of us were visiting family. Um, and it just meant that we had more time to ourselves, quite possibly. But is this year going to be different? Do you have a holiday planned? Um, it's just been raring to get away um, and it's the only time you have so that's one thing to recognize if you think you've got four months to knit possibly you haven't you could even say actually i feel like i've got more than that to knit because i've got so much more time than i would normally have do you know your life best just um think about that before you start planning what you want to knit the other thing is to say how long does it take me to knit something if you've been knitting along with me with a couple of knit-alongs in the last year, then we knitted a baby blanket. How long did that take you? We knitted a shower scrubby. How long did that take you? If you've had any of my kits or patterns, just recognise what you've knitted in the last six months or even in the last year and say, when I was knitting that, I thought it would take me a week, but it took me four. Or when I was knitting that, I thought it would take me three weeks, but it actually took me ten days. Just recognise that and say, what? Is the truth here? Am I over ebbing how much I could actually achieve? Just be realistic. That's what we're after at the moment. Let's not think we can do more than we actually can. One of my biggest tips whenever we talk about knitting for Christmas is to knit what you've knitted before. Repeating a pattern, repeating something that you know you've knitted, so you're not going to sit there and go, I don't understand this, I need to learn all of this jargon help <laughs> I get really stuck if that feels like something that you do a lot when you pick up a new pattern and it's something that you've knitted before so you've gone through that process already um, for example I would very happily sit down and knit this pair of cuffs 
and this cowl for maybe someone in the family because I've knitted it a couple of times already. Just pull out another ball of yarn and say, that was quite easy. I did them in a week, did them in 10 days. I'll knit another pair for someone else's gift. If you want to knit these for yourself, then knit another one for a gift. And I would exactly do the same for these as well. These are the um, fingerless mitts that we have in the shop as well. I absolutely love fingerless mitts. Being in the UK and in some warmer winter um, climates, then fingerless mitts work really well. And actually, when it was just a, a colder winter, I would wear fingerless mitts over a plain glove. My fingers are free, and if I want to, I can just roll my fingers up inside it and it's really nice and warm. Easy to put in your pocket and to get something out of your bag, under your zip or anything like that without having to take the gloves off and lose them. So we do have a few patterns here. These are the kisses pattern and these are the plait pattern for the mitts. Once you've got the hang of these patterns, you know how to make the thumbs, then it's just slightly different. This one is just a wee bit longer and it's just got a different cable on it. As soon as you understand your cables, you can go for it. Make them for all the ladies in your family. That's what I did for the one year and everyone loved it. So I, um, these kind of gifts really are, are very well much appreciated. And uh, yeah, they're small. They don't take a great deal to knit. They are a single ball of yarn. So the other thing, if you uh, want to knit pairs of patterns, is to knit your face cloth and knit a scrubby to match. So those are other things that you could knit. Knit pairs of items and then you could split them for different people if you want to. Pairs of items that you can wear yourself. And like I said, Christmas can be about Knitting in the winter, knitting in the winter can be about knitting for yourself as well. It doesn't have to be about knitting for others all the time. What I will say, and there's always this caveat, and I will always say that, if someone asks you for something for Christmas and you do not want to knit it, it feels too complicated, you never used that yarn before, you don't understand the pattern, it's a massive ask for someone who doesn't understand knitting to say to you, knit it for me. Then don't knit it. Um, us knitters can be very much, oh of course, I'm so generous, generous. Uh, of course I will knit it for you. And sometimes we're clever enough to say, you pay for the yarn and I will knit it for you. <laughs> that will make some people go away. <laughs> but really, it's a case of learning to say no. And I learnt that eventually, but it took a while. And I would just encourage you to just say no, just more in your life as well. Would you get me a cup of tea? No, make it yourself. <laughs> something like that but no in other parts of your life makes no when you're knitting a lot easier too and yes you can be generous you can give people things but what you want to knit and what you're willing to knit okay so that is my lecture <laughs> for Christmas knitting Christmas knitting yes start now please start now even if you're just thinking about it um, we're going to have more bundles coming out in the shop and more patterns coming out and kits coming out in the shop. Four months to go. I said to a friend yesterday, four weeks to go. And she went, no, please don't say that. You mean months, don't you? I said, yes, I do mean months. <laughs> that was scary. But no, four months to go before the big day. Four months to go. 25th is tomorrow. Four months to go. Today is the Christmas Eve. We've got a whole four months of Strictly Come Dancing. Uh, maybe X Factor as well. Um, you know, it's it's a long time. In my case, it's a whole, I hope, a whole four months of Doctor Who. I think the new season's coming. Please tell me the new season's coming. But yes, please, 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 please take your time. Give yourself a reality check on how much you decide to knit. And if you want to say, I'll knit that. I'll finish it, then I'll choose the next thing. I'll knit that, I'll finish it, then I'll choose the next thing. You don't have to decide everything now. Just to be aware that being held to this guilt chip on your shoulder because someone says, you said you'd knit me that for Christmas, isn't going to help you. It's not going to help you at all. And of course, what I will say is, if you want even more planning tips, then of course go and have a look at the Christmas Knitting playlist. 
And if you want to deep dive even more with worksheets, with support on how you can really get your plan set out. If you're a kind of if you're a planner and if you love knowing what you're doing next, it can get overwhelming and anxiety can fill can fill the space. Then um, do go and have a look at the Christmas knitting workshop that is full of ideas, full of videos that will make it easier for you. Yes, this video is going to help you and I do suggest you just take these few steps to start with. If you want to dive deeper and you want to have it all written out, go and have a look at that. And of course, knitting is a big part of self-care. We all know that. So if you're knitting and you're frantic and you're worrying about whether or not you're going to get things done in time, then it's not self-care anymore, is it? I will see you again soon. Thanks so much for joining me today. Bye for now. Happy knitting.